and welcome back everyone to a continuation of my previous video on how to build a free website using Google Sites. So here is the site that I built called dailypicker.com. It's up live. You can take a look at it. This is from the previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, please go back and watch that full video to see how I set up this free full website with your own domain right here. And so you can do this all free. Everything is totally free. The only thing you're paying for is the domain name. And I bought that from GoDaddy and it costs about $20 a year. So that's not bad, but you no longer need to pay for hosting. So today in this video, we're going to cover how to add PayPal shopping cart to this site because the previous video, I only showed you how to link up these type of products um, directly to Amazon or if you have an Etsy site, you just link it up, right? These are just straightforward URL links. But if you want to add a shopping cart to this, I'll show you how to do it. And we're going to use PayPal. And so here here is my Google sites right here, right? Sites.google.com. And you'll see right here, I already added some PayPal buttons to this shopping cart with drop down menus. Um, if they want to buy this now, they can click add to cart. And then I also have this other example. PayPal has a lot of different button examples that you can create. And this is just a buy now one, but I don't suggest this. I suggest doing a cart because people can add multiple items and then they check out so they can check out using this view cart button right up here. And then they can process it using PayPal or Stripe and they can actually even use their credit card to pay for it. PayPal makes it very simple to integrate this into it and that's what i'm going to step through today so if you want to stay tuned uh, let's get straight into it okay so the first thing you want to do is to go to paypal.com and of course set up your own account and log into it and we're going to set this aside for now but just know that you have to set up a paypal account uh, it could be a personal one or a business one and then i'll show you the links to go to to create the buttons but after you create your paypal account you'll have to go over here you have to go to developer.paypal.com and then log into the dashboard on that using the same login for your PayPal. So let's do that. And you'll see here I'm logged into my PayPal developer account. So they give you two options right here, sandbox and live. So the meaning of this is that if you're in development mode, you want to use the sandbox and you'll need to create a new app right here. Once you're live, you know, you click over live and then create a new app for that and put in the keys for that. But you want to do all your testing on the sandbox. So let's step through creating an app. I'll create an app right here. So you give it a name. We'll give this app name Daily Picker app. You know, you can call whatever you want and merchant and then create app. All right, so it's gonna show you all this info right here. Here's my Daily Picker app and it has the sandbox account, client ID and a secret. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this right now because I am going to delete this after. I'm not gonna keep this around. This is just for this video, but you do not want to share this client ID with people. You don't wanna share the secret. And this is how it creates it. It creates this client ID, it creates a secret. And what I want you to do is open up a text pad and then you're going to copy this. Click on this, command copy, paste it into your text pad because you need to save this info for later. And you call this client ID. And same thing for the secret. You do want to save the secret too. And down here for the secret, you know, click on that, copy, secret. And then save that to the side because we're going to use it later. And then these are some of the other app settings if you want the invoicing payouts and all that stuff. So go ahead, look through it, see what you like, enable it. And then right here, I went back to my apps and credentials and you'll see that it created this app right here. And then uh, I'm just going to delete this later. And like I said, once you go live, you have to create a live app and get a new client ID and secret ID for that. But right now we're just going to do a sandbox so, so we can do testing. All right. So now that we have all that set up and we have our keys, we're going to go back to PayPal here. And what I want to do is go up here to paypal.com and we need to go to the buttons and uh, there is a link to it somewhere around here, but it is difficult to get to. What I'd like to do is just type up buttons up here. You see just paypal.com slash buttons. And it's a lot easier if you just do this without looking for the links. And then you'll see right here, there's a lot of different buttons you can create. And here's the add to cart button. So I'm going to do an add to cart button. And I'll quickly step through this because it's very simple. You know, you choose a type of bun that you want, either buy now, shopping cart. We're doing a shopping cart. You give the item a name. So since my website right here is about this detox type tea, I have a daytime tea, nighttime tea. You know, I can do a daytime tea one. And then you give it an item ID, DTT. And then you give it a price. You know, I'll do $25 to buy a daytime tea currency. US dollars right here. And then uh, it shows you how it looks like right over on the right. So if I add a drop down menu to this with a price option, you see this, and then it adds this drop down to show you how it looks like. And it pre-fills it with these three options first. If you want to remove an option, you know, you remove it like that. Since I only want one, I'll put daytime tea right here, $25 for that. And this is how it, it looks like exactly. 
and you know just follow what it says right here it, it says name of drop down menu example color sizes this is like detox t and then once you create this you have to click done right here and then it applies to the view right here how it looks like they get a little drop down and then you they click on add to cart and it goes into the cart uh, you can add shipping too you want to give them like five dollars for shipping you can do tax right here i'm not going to do that and then I just keep it on this uh, merchant account ID, use my secure merchant account ID for that. And then we can close this up and go to step two. Uh, you do want to ch have this check save button to PayPal so that you can modify it later if you want. So keep that checked. Let's go to step three. And then right here, I like to keep everything how it is because this allows the, the buyer to leave you a message if they need to, you know, with a little message box so they can put little comments or something. And then do you need your customer shipping address? Yes, you want their shipping address. So whenever they buy something, it's going to email you all this info and then you take that info and you ship the stuff out. So yeah, it's as simple as that. And then create button, click it down here. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that this PayPal system is kind of glitchy. So sometimes you'll click this create button and it won't create the button so just be patient with it it might say some errors and stuff uh if it keeps on giving you errors i suggest log out wait a few minutes log back in and then just go back to your button and edit it or create a new button again you know it's kind of a hassle like that but i did notice that it would have errors now and then but just keep going through the process until it gives you a code at the end click create button and let's see if it crashes on me <laughs> oh all right it went through here we go. So after you create the button and it works, you're going to get this little code right here. So you select the code, right? And then copy it. Let's go back to our notepad here because we want to save all this info here. Put down that code. So that's all it does. This button creation thing just generates this code for us in HTML. It's a form code and we can use that on our websites. And this is what it looks like right here, just like that. So after you get this, I do suggest going down here and it has this create a view cart button. You do want to create that. So go ahead and click on that create a view cart button. And it's what I have over here on my site. Let me go to my project file right here. See, I have this view cart button that's right here. I put it right there and it's going to give you the same type of code that looks just like this for the view cart. You copy it and then you enter it in. And so, yeah, these are the buns that I created and I'll show you how to put it into this Google sites, but you can use any other editor, put HTML code in there. I'll just show you how to do it. Okay. So let me show you this right here. I'm going to go to my visual studio code and I have these notes right here where I added my add to cart button codes, right? So that I can just save it and use it later. So I have my daytime T one here, nighttime T, you know, they're different form codes and I'll show you right here. Here's the daytime T code. That's the form one for that. Here's the nighttime T one for that code. And this is the for HTML form code for it. And what I want to mention about this in here, if you look closely, there are these input fields right here that are hidden. And so there are only a few things that you can edit in here on your own. I don't suggest copying this, modifying it for multiple different buttons because it has this button ID right here, this value. And as you created it in PayPal, PayPal then created this type of button for you and saved it into their system to reference it. And so that it has all this info for you. You cannot modify a lot of these stuff, but you can modify the text if you want. So if you made a mistake somewhere in here, you want to call it something else to say, I, I want to call it add on detox or something in here like that. Or instead of saying this long ass thing right here, 30 day pack, I can just say T or something like that, right? If you want to modify it, you can modify it like that, but only the text. You cannot modify some of these other stuff or it might break it. So yeah, I keep my codes in here so I can use it. So let's say if I copy this, right? And let's go back here. How I edit this is I click into this. Um, I add an embed right here because an embed lets you embed codes. That's what it means. And if I edit this, when I click on this embed icon, it gives me this type of thing right here, this te little text box. And see, I just added the form in here. I just pasted the whole form and I can make edits in here if I want. Once again, you know, if I want to call it something else in here, you know, detox or something like that, I can make those edits and then I can say next. And then it actually shows me how it works right here. It shows me this button, how it looks like. And if I'm okay with it, I can save it and then it adds it right here. That's all it does for that. I do want to show you some editing options in here. Let's go back to the code here so you can see a little bit easier. You can add up here and say align equals center. And what that does is it centers this whole thing. And I'll show you in here. I have a center on this form. See so align center. But let's see what happens when I take that out. See it 
it misaligns it right here you know you so you want to do some alignments or some other html formatting in here you can do that go ahead and just test it out edit in your own html and uh, see how it looks like before you save it so that's my tips for that i also did an align on the table down here because you look down here on the table you see i have an align sensor right here on the table so i just like to kind of like align all my stuff make it look pretty you can do other stuff too if you want you can add other text but like i said don't modify it too much because once they click this add to cart it is going to add this 25 dollars to the cart for this one item so here is the cons for doing this thing right you notice that we created this and we added a five dollar shipping to it well that's for this whole thing alone let's say if you have multiple drop downs and you allow them to buy three of these it's still going to only cost them five dollars for the shipping it's not going to add five dollars to each three orders it doesn't do that math around it that's one con about it because let's say if you're creating this with a drop down that allows people to order 10 20 items or something like that but you want to add a specific shipping for each thing well it's, too, it's kind of difficult to do that so i want to say it's it is mainly for per item and so that is the con about it uh there's a few other things but uh i'll move on to the buy now button so for this buy now button i went through the same button process uh, i'll show you two right here if i go to you can go down here if you don't want to step through the whole thing from creating a, an empty form you can create a similar button and it just reuses this thing and you can modify it now you can go to my save buttons down here i'm gonna go to my save buttons oh see sometimes it gives me this error and it's very annoying and then i'd have to just log out log back in and uh yeah it's kind of annoying with this paypal um, button creation i'll show you right here i did create a uh, smart button that it's called down here so i want to click on this down here and edit this and when you go through the smart button creation the code is a little bit different and i'll show you how the smart button code looks like through my code editor because you can read it a little bit better oh by the way here's the view cart button you know i created my view cart button it looks like this it has this whole form like i said all of it is just html coding that it generates for you and it puts in all this code that it needs to do here it is up here i just created this embed code right here if you have a wordpress site or something else go to the option where you can edit your html pages or the, your the pages for that where you can edit it go into the code section of it where you can paste it in that's how you do it um, but for google sites here it made it very easy i just click somewhere on this form i click embed and see it it lets me embed code just like that and i put in the code and then i can just drag this button around and put place it wherever i want so that's why i like this google sites right here so that's the view cart button right there for this view cart so let me scroll down here and show you this other button right here it is my single button it is a smart button and what the smart button does is it allows you to have more options you know this little example right here i'm i set one up to sell shirts and all that t-shirts and I can have different options for different sizes, uh, different options to select how many they want. But then this thing does a little script in here. So it's a little bit different from the previous button up here, you know, with the just a simple form. I like this add to cart button more, but this smart button has some scripting down here that does all the calculations for you with your um you know taxes and shipping and all that and it is a smart button. I'll show you how the smart button looks like. It's right here. This is that single buy now button and this button i want to show you right here it's the only one where you have to scroll down and it has this part right here where you have to enter in your client id so this is where you grab your client id that we saved you copy that and then you have to paste it in here for this you know you can step through creating that smart button but here's the problem with that so the thing with this buy now button is that once you click it it goes straight to checkout and you have to buy it and then you have to go back and if you want to buy another one you click on it check out buy it so you have to buy multiple times that's why i like the add to cart because you can add everything and then check out and just buy it all at once uh, another thing with it is that it is like the smart type button where you expand out you see it has more options it has a venmo button um but you know i don't really care for that here watch if i edit it i'll show you how it looks like and so what i did was i just minimized it and it only shows the paypal button and that's the one i like but yeah it just has more options up here and it is a quick buy now button and like i said it's the only time right here where you have to enter in that client id and that's how it uses it for this and it's the same type of coding up here you can edit these texts if you want but i wouldn't suggest it because you know you've already created the button and it's saved in paypal so if you start modifying some of these prices it might not be accurate uh, you can only modify the text if you want but look how smaller the code is for the add to cart and then i didn't have to add my whole um, client id and all that 
it's saved in here already and it knows it for my form so i really suggest the add to cart button but then you have to add the view cart button to it as well but yeah those are the differences i suggest you go through paypal buttons and just test them all out see which one you like maybe you'll find another one that you you do like but i do know this is the most common one add to cart and then view cart checkout and you can use credit cards all that to pay so yeah, I think this was just a very quick tutorial on how to create these buttons and giving you these options, how to set up your sandbox, uh, set up the buttons, and some of the errors you have, and some of my tips on what you should use on creating it, you know, whether add to cart, um, buy now, and then the view cart button, and how you embed it. So just think of it as coding still. Any editor website that you're building, whether it's Wix, WordPress, anything like that, you need to go to the code section of it. Then you just copy this and place it into that code section. Like I said, Google Sites is free. It allows me to embed code. Very simple by clicking this button, embed it, drag it where I want, and it looks exactly how it, lo how it looks. And so that's why I like this. Sorry guys, I'm not gonna make this part of the ad cart and all that live on the site right now because this is just an example for this video but i am keeping this up for you guys to view to code out and have an example with coding how to build a website and all that a free website with your own domain right here so view that previous video if you haven't watched that yet and hopefully this video right here helped you on creating your small business website for free or anything portfolio you know like your small little shop that you're trying to sell shirts or jewelry or anything like that Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope you share this with many other people who's looking to create a free website. So there you guys go. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. Kodakai out.